invite you in. Yes. Father, we invite you into the atmosphere. We invite you into the very air, to the breath that we breathe. We invite you in to our hearts and our minds, our will and our emotions. We invite you in to be Lord over what I say and be Lord over what I shouldn't say. Yes, Guard my mouth to only say what you want me to say. Lord, I want to be so obedient to you. I only want to do your will, Father, and I know that these ladies also just want to do your will. So we're saying, Holy Spirit, here and now, it's all yours. Just take it away and, and let us just enjoy what you have for us. So, <coughs> evening. Ooh. This is so much better than two weeks ago where everybody's like, because the time change, I, I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. Do I like do a dance up here or, you know, scare them or something? Cause, so, so what we are talking about is a series of spiritual warfare. And I know last week it's like, what does that have to do with what spiritual warfare? So we talked about the mind and the importance of aligning it to God's kingdom. So, and we also looked at Philippians 4, 7, I believe that's on your handout, yeah. and where it says, And the peace of God, which pass, surpasses all comprehension or all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. And how guarding your heart and your mind are all part of the spiritual warfare. So it's important that we start with a clear mind and clear thinking. We're going to call this the, the first session, the foundational session, and then this is the, the other foundational se session to go with the first foundational session. <laughs> so there we go. If your foundation structure is compromised, everything else that's been built on that is compromised. Um, your, your walls are going to be not level. There's going to be cracks in, in, the, in the plaster. The floors are not going to be, you know, you put a... a uh, marble there that's going to go straight down instead of just staying right where it's at. So that's the same concept in God's kingdom. If, if we have teaching that has been built on a faulty foundation, it's just going to build more faulty er if that's such a word. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> worser. So worser, there you go. <laughs> it's one of my, that's one of my words, worser. So when I was trying to get this teaching together, we had discussed it as, as a group, and we had decided, here's what we're going to do, and I was like, I got it right here, God. We're going to start with this, and then we're going to go to this. Mm -hmm. And I kept trying to do the this, <laughs> and the this wasn't happening. But the Holy Spirit was like giving me something else. I'm like, no, that doesn't really have anything to do with spiritual warfare. Um, so me trying to do my thing, it wasn't working. And I was clashing with the Holy Spirit because I, I'm used to, you know, my teaching, my foundational teaching on spiritual warfare is different than what the Holy Spirit wanted me to teach on. So I'm trying to get this together. Finally, I called my friend Sue. Does everybody know Sue Mead? Kind of know who she is. Um, not only is she my friend, she, she's a mentor. I really look up to her because she's been through some things in the spiritual realm. I mean, she has really been through some things, and she knows things that I do not know and that I don't ever want to know. Um, but I probably will at some point. So I said, Sue, I've really got to bounce something off, to you, off of you. Um, I'm trying to do this teaching, and, and I'm, I'm like going this way, but, but I know that I'm supposed to be, you know, teaching on spiritual warfare. And she said, Cindy, you are right on target. Because when I was there, I was, I was wrestling with the same thing. I wanted to do the thing that I did, and I wasn't able to do it. So I found myself in this dilemma. Well, what do I do, God? Well, of course we do what he tells us to do. Sure. So 
it just confirmed that, okay, Cindy, you're not like, you know, being rebellious and saying, no, I'm going to go this way. It's just God was, it's repositioning the way we teach and the way we think. Um, so when COVID came about, really it wasn't COVID, it was God that allowed it. We had our first year, we were confined to home and, and things like that. And we had the opportunity to examine our hearts and our motives and, and the way we did things and major repentance from the influences of the world. Um, either, our, either things that God began to, to show us our, our, our sins and our complacency, which really is sin, but complacency sounds so much better than, you know, than sin. Um, and you know what? As I was thinking about that, I could it be that we have kings in our armor in, in, the, in the area of, of teaching the Word of God? The influence of the world has inched in unassumingly that we didn't even know it was here until God stopped us long enough so he would show us everything in his technicolor. I'm like, I'm all excited you gave me that word, Technicolor, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, my, my, my thoughts on Technicolor is, um, some of you may not know what that means, because if you were older, you, um, you know that, you know the black and white TVs? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. She's like, no, no, really, you, you, you don't know black and white. Come on, girl. <laughs> so the black and white TV, and I know you don't know it. <laughs> um, I, I didn't know anything about black, or, or we didn't get a color till I was in, um, till I was 12 years old, because my dad was too cheap. You know, back then, you kept it until it broke, and then you would go to the store to get the tubes to try to fix it, and if it didn't, if it didn't get fixed, that's when you got the, the color TV. So, the Technicolor, it went from black and white, and there was actually color in it, and it made it more vibrant. Well, God is wanting us to see things in His technicolor no longer in the black and white way that the world thinks so if God is shifting the earth then surely he's shifting our teaching sure he's getting the worldly influence out of our teaching and you know it's so weird because I, I thought why Cindy are you so irritated when you see somebody on TV teaching the same thing prior to this whole COVID thing. They taught it when COVID happened, they taught it during, they teaching it after, and I'm thinking, are you people even seeing what's happening in the world? Why are you talking about the prosperity message when we're in a place of repentance? Why are you talking about doing training for the prophetic when we're, and, and this is just me, so anybody who's doing it out there, you know, no, no condemnation, but I'm thinking, why are we not teaching on what we should be teaching about what's going on right now? That's, that's Cindy's teaching, that's my thought, but not only that, if you go a little deeper, why haven't we adjusted the way we teach? It could be on the goodness of God. It could be the way that, that we that that we do things nowadays. It could be on on prosperity. It could be on anything. But the message, it just seems like a lot of people have not changed or they haven't tweaked it or they haven't taken the worldliness out of the message. And to me it sounds like a clanging symbol. Anybody like hearing that stuff? Oh, I see some faces, yes. So for the camera, there are some faces going on. So it's just not me. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. Okay, very good. So why not the way we view spiritual warfare? I mean, really, why not? I, I do have, I mean, I've heard some people say, well, you know, I've got a lot of really good information for people who come out of witchcraft. They came out of witchcraft. Okay, um, they came out of witchcraft. <laughs> right. um, nothing wrong with that because you can get some good information there, but, but they came out of witchcraft. Um, 
and we're going to go we'll go into that a little more but I just to say that so um, for, for those people who are on Facebook there is this picture that that's been going around and, it, and it's the lion roar and it's and it's Jesus Christianity versus the kitty <laughs> worldly Christianity right it's the truth though right because we have two Christianities right now yeah, we do. And so the gospel has been so watered down with the meow Christianity <laughs> that what we've done is such a disservice to our younger people because we have not showed them our Christianity. And we're not going to be around forever. And we haven't showed anybody anything on the power of God. Mm -hmm. They honestly, and I know they think they know it, they, they try to, you know, um, jump it away. They try to um, get the strobing lights out there and, you know, like, yeah. strobe it away. <laughs> that's, my, that's my other new word. Or they're, they're going to um, worship it away. You know, we're going to jump and dance and just say, God is good, and, you know, and, and he's good all the time, and, and, there's no power, not that there's nothing wrong with the song. It's, it's, there's no power in it. We have depleted God of power. It, it's our fault because we've been doing yeah, Christianity. But let's just read 2 Corinthians in the Amplified 10 4. The weapons of our warfare are not physical, weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Amen. In the living it says, use God's mighty weapons, not those made by men, to knock down the devil's stronghold. Amen. You're knocking down his stronghold, it's not going to go meow, and it's not, it's, it's not going to fall like that. You're going to go to his stronghold, or wherever it is, and you're going to say, hey, get out in Jesus' name, now. And you're not going to take no for an answer, Amen. but when you say go, I expect you to go, Amen. and we're not going anywhere till you go. And guess what? You're going, so go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Uh, my husband has this, uh, he does the, the demonic part of the, the ministry, and I was just talking to a lady, a friend of mine, and she goes, you know, Cindy, um, she had, we had just taken her through ministry and we were doing a follow-up. I keep hearing Herb in my head, go in Jesus' name. And she goes, and every time I hear that, I just say, go in Jesus' name. So, you know, there, there's something, and, and Herb carries a lot of authority. Not only does his voice, it's, it's deep, but he knows who he is. And when he says go, guess what? There's really not a choice. But we have given the enemy a choice. Okay, don't go, but but don't act up. Don't stay, but don't, you know, but if you're going to stay, don't act up. We can't do that anymore. Oh, amen. Because he's running a monk all over the streets, isn't he? I mean, yeah. just going crazy all over the streets. So, they're not made by men. Our weapons are not cardinal. They are mighty, and they are powerful. And if your mind is going somewhere else, like last, the last time we taught, and you're having a really hard time keeping thoughts or you're just letting it wander, guess what? You're not going to be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. So, one thing that Sue did tell me, and I thought, oh my gosh, I haven't done this, but guess what? We're going to be doing some repenting through this whole time. Is I had to say, God, I'm so sorry that I have not made it a mandate for me to teach what I know or a mandate to show people how to war. Um, because see, my, my generation, and I think the generation above me, um, especially for, for them, what they did for us, because that's what they were taught, is that they were the leaders, I was not, and I did everything that I was told to do under their supervision. And so they, they did the work, and I just got to participate whenever they needed me to step in. 
And so that's how I was taught. Believe it or not, I did have the person who taught me repent for doing that. Is that like, that's a godly woman right there. And so what we have done is we have not passed anything down to the next generation. We've kept it all for ourselves. There's also something in that. It's, it's you know what, I have the anointing. I have the goods. And so I just want you to sit there and look cute while I minister. And then if I need you, I'll use you. And, and we're not doing anybody a service. We're doing a very disservice when we do that. And we've all done that. And we can't do that anymore. It's been a long time since I've done that. But I've done that. And we're just going to call that really for what it is. It's called pride. Pride. Everybody say pride. pride. <laughs> oh, you know what? I just remembered. I thought when people when people said, now say so-and-so, I'm like, I'm not saying so-and-so. Stop <laughs> saying that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I always do that. Stop saying that. And I don't say it because they say to say it. Okay, so it's pride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So through this time of teaching today, we're going to stop, we're going to repent. So I would like to stop and repent for not discipling people the way we should. Okay? And is everybody with me? I mean, if you don't want to, don't do it. But, but I want to do it, and, and I really think that we're, we're going to start, you know, just kind of loosening some things up in the spirit. So, Father God, we come before you. Tonight, this Wednesday night, and we repent, Father. We repent for not discipling the younger people the way that we should have. We repent for thinking that we had all the goods, that we knew exactly what we were doing and nobody else could do it better. Lord, I am so sorry that we messed up a generation because of our arrogance and because what we were taught, Lord. Lord, we did monkey see, monkey do instead of thinking for ourselves. And we repent for it, Lord. And we lay that sin at your feet. And we thank you for forgiving us for what we did, Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh, I felt Jesus all over that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as you can see, we really haven't started talking about the spiritual warfare part yet. <laughs> it's because we're still laying that foundation. It has a lot of cracks and holes in it, you know? It really does. So I want to do it God's way. Everybody in agreement? Let's, I mean, let's like really just press in there to do it God's way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the second part of spiritual warfare I want to talk about is making a distinction between God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom. That is not a typo with Satan. I never capitalize his name. He doesn't get to have the name capitalized. So how is God's kingdom different than Satan's? God's kingdom consists of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen. God's kingdom invites you to fellowship with a divine creator, with Father God. God's kingdom gives you a father who will never leave you or forsake you. God's kingdom doesn't lord over you, but leads and guides you. God's kingdom gives you peace in the midst, I see that typo, of the storm. God's kingdom gives you a choice. God's kingdom gives you his son to live inside of you. God's kingdom requires you to be accountable for your actions. In God's kingdom, he's already provided payment through his son, Jesus. God does not promise power but he promises relationship with him, and with the relationship comes the power and authority. If you've allowed yourself to have pure relationship with God, you cannot help but to bring the power and authority with it. Everybody 
agree with that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, Mark, and, and I know that Mark 16, 17 says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. And, and the reason I'm saying that, because I'm saying God doesn't promise power, but promises relationship, then comes the power and authority. I realize that that's already in place. But believers need to be in relationship with Jesus. A great example is Paul, the apostle. He was in relationship with Jesus. Acts 19.11 God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hand of Paul because Paul was in relationship. So that the handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick and the diseases left him and the evil spirits went out. And then 13 but some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempting, attempting to use the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying, I order you in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches. Now we may not say that, but the majority of believers will say, I, in the name of Jesus, I command you, you know that thing Cindy or that thing Delinda does, that's, that's what I want you to do, to leave, because just like them. And there's no power behind it. We are a very powerless church at this point. And God is not going to have it. I, I, I just, I mean, I just, I, I don't even know more how to stress it. It's not happening anymore. You can not allow the enemy to do what he's been doing. And it says now, there were the seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief, doing this. But the evil spirits responded and said, Well, I recognize Jesus, and I know Paul, but who are you? Who are you? And the man who, had, who was the, the man in whom the evil spirit pounced on them and subdued all of them and overpowered them. So they fled out of the house naked and wounded. We don't want that to be us. No. 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 We, we don't want that to be us. And my learning place in this um, didn't start out with power and authority. It was, it was trial and error, hit and miss. It was, well, I was trying to be who I was in Christ Jesus. I had some misses. I had some hits. Um, there was a time where Herb and I were ministering to a man who we just thought everything was going good. And, you know, I said, okay, now we're going to tell that, you know, anger to go. And he looked at me. And I looked at Herb and I thought, you know, his head's turning like <laughs> this. Okay, how does your head do that thing? And... Uh, you know, in my cockiness, like, because I've done it before, and, and they backed off, I was getting ready to get up, because I'm going to tell him exactly what I think of him. And he just looked at me, and the Holy Spirit said, don't you dare get up. Don't get up. So I sat down. Okay. <laughs> and so we proceeded to, to um, and, and he was, you know, he was howling and everything that Herb and I had never seen before. But because we had enough of God in us, we knew that we had the authority. Although we were doing this, inside, inside we're doing this, and I'm looking at her, but, you know, voice getting a little louder. That's why I say, now, you don't have to scream, they're not deaf. But back then, I screamed because I was scared. <laughs> but I wasn't going to let you know that enemy. I was, I mean, it's okay for my flesh to be scared, but my spirit wasn't scared. And so we, we cast this thing out, and this poor guy, he was, he just like, what happened? What, what happened? And he goes, I tried to get out of the chair to kill you, but I saw two angels had me pinned down, and I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, in my stupidity, in, in our ignorance, you know, I, I didn't, we didn't know that. Now, we know it now, and I would have just said, you know what, you need to shut up right now, head turn around right, and we're not having any of that. Because of the authority that I know today Amen. that Amen. I carry. Back then, not so much. <laughs> and, and through that, 
that 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 whole thing of making to myself to be more like Paul because of my relationship with God. There's been just two instances that I actually was faced a spirit of death. When I say face, the first time was like face to face, and 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 it was in my son's room, and it's like no, he's not saved. <laughs> he ain't going anywhere right now. And this is before he was saved, and so it it, it just. You know, you go toe to toe, face to face with the demon. Either he's going to think you're, he's going to know you're a fake, or he's going to know oh, that's the real deal. Amen. And I said, you know what? I'm not moving from the spot, and I'm not leaving. So guess who's leaving? It left. And then there, there was one other time. Why am I telling you this? Not to brag, but. We need to know this because they don't just go just because you say go in Jesus' name. Demons mock the name of Jesus. Amen. They're, they're, you know, witches and warlocks, they're, they're, they're taught when they're little to mock the name of Jesus. That's why I use Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeshua HaMashiach. They don't like that. The second time was my sister was in the hospital and, and she had just had open heart surgery and and she wouldn't talk. She'd just speak in tongues. And I'm like, girl, what is going on with you? And she would just, she would look at me. She'd go, da -da 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 -da. And, and she's like one of those really loud ones. And, and, and the nurse is just like, I said, is she just speaking in tongues? Don't worry about it. It's so good. She's just, you know, yeah. And she kept doing that. And I said, and so she would speak in tongues. And I would speak in tongues. And she would calm down. And then I walk away, and my oldest sister was there, and you know she just didn't know Jesus at that time. Um, she does now, just just so you know. And and I said, Rita, what is what's wrong? And she just she goes, oh, no, 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 no. and she points, and I said, Oh, I see you. And Lorraine's like, Okay, back it up, sister. What's going on here? And it was a, it was a spirit of death. And she looked at me, and she knew, and she stopped praying in tongues. Because she knew that she was trying to get my attention. Hello, Cindy. <laughs> Takes me a little while, but so we told that thing to go. I mean, she has passed away, but that night, it wasn't it. <laughs> and she was fearful. She saw it. She saw it, and you could just see the fear in her face. I'm like, huh? and I thought, and here's the other thing is that I knew that I was not supposed to tackle that by myself. So I called her. I said, her. Guess what? Guess what we're doing, hon? So he, I, so he puts, he puts the phone. I put it out there, and he's just going to town, and that thing leaves. And Lorraine, my sister Lorraine, she goes, "What just happened? What did Jesus do? What, 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 what's going on?" And then she calls my other sister. Oh my gosh, Lori, you should see what just happened. You should see what Cindy did. Her and her were, and then she was just going on, and that's how she got saved. <laughs> but you can't be one of those seven sons. Right. You have to know. That you know because you have to be in fellowship like Paul was in fellowship with Jesus. Right. Now see, we're living in the days that we have to examine our hearts, our motives, and our old way of thinking. Um, guess what? We're going to stop and repent again. We're going to repent of the old, of the old way of thinking. You guys ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Father, we come before you one more time. We repent of the old way of thinking. Lord, it's stinking thinking, and it doesn't align with your kingdom plans and purposes. Lord, where we wanted the, the power, but without the relationship, without putting in, Father, the time with you, would you forgive us? For not aligning properly with your spirit. Father, I am so grateful that you give us an opportunity to repent of wrong thinking. Thank you for giving that, us that opportunity in Jesus' name. And then we have Satan's kingdom. Whereas in Satan... In Satan's king, kingdom comes promised power. In his kingdom is the power to rule over others. When in fact, the trap is he's ruling over you, you just don't know it. In, Sa in Satan's kingdom, there's always a hidden agenda, and it's always 
his agenda. It's not even the other demons. It's his. They just carry everything out. In Satan's kingdom, he appeals to your flesh and your pride. There's that pride again. In Satan's kingdom, he gives you demons to live in you, to give you power, and then they turn on you and they enslave you. Satan is the storm. He is the storm. Where Jesus is the peace in the midst of the storm. Satan is the storm. Satan's kingdom, it promises fame, and when he's done with you, he discards you. Satan's kingdom promises you wealth, but it comes with a price. And the price is so high that most people do not live past the price they have to pay. They usually end their life, which is very, very sad. We're going to 8 o'clock, or 8, 7, 45, or... So, in order to understand spiritual warfare, we needed to know how the kingdoms operate. So we just saw the difference in them, in the different kingdoms. But, but I want to show you how God operates versus the way that Satan operates. God operates through love. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. And you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. There is the mind, the soul, and a heart. And the heart, it's all connected. It's, it's right there. We started this series with the mind. And we talked about the, the soul, the heart. It's all connected. It, has, it will never stop being connected to warfare. And then God operates through obedience to him. Romans 16, 19. For the report of your obedience has reached everyone. Therefore, I am rejoicing over you. But I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. Obedience brings wisdom. I pray for, when I go in the ministry room or when I'm seeking God on something, I always ask Him for wisdom. And with wisdom, get understanding. And with understanding, get knowledge. I need those things in order to operate in God's kingdom. I just don't fly by the seat of my pants anymore, and I say anymore because I used to. It's like, oh, I've got giftings. Here's old cocky Cindy, you know, with her giftings. No, uh-uh, no. I'm very sober when I approach the kingdom of God nowadays. And that was in my earlier years. Earlier years. I, I, I've learned how to grow out of that and mature. And I never do anything without asking God's wisdom. What I say to the Lord when I'm in the ministry room, if you don't go with me, I am not going. I need you all the time, every day, of every hour, of every second of my life. That takes work. If you think that people that stand up here get to where they're at because... You know, they got lucky. It's not the truth. You have to go through some things in order to, to, to get to where you have that kind of authority. And it comes with a big price. And it's not always fun. There's a lot of pain involved. There's a lot of walking it out. But even in that, I would do it all over again. Because it's worth it every ounce of pain that I've been through because of it. And so, obedience brings wisdom, but the innocence, when it's unmixed, when it's pure as a metal, without the mixture of evil, when it's free from guile, when the, when the mind is pure, back to that mind again, that's what innocence means. Without a mixture of evil. It means the purity of the mind. Why does God keep talking about the mind? <laughs> I had no idea there was so much 
about the mind, and every time I try to look for another scripture, and he, they always have something with mind in it. So I haven't done this on purpose. He's just saying, Cindy, hello, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you something. I don't have the whole picture yet, but I do know that if we're not keeping our mind aligned with the Holy Spirit, and you want to do some spiritual warfare in this day and hour, it's not going to work unless you keep your mind in line with the Holy Spirit. And if you were here um, two weeks ago and we went through this and then all of a sudden you realize, wow, I'm really being harassed. I thought, I, you know, I'm, you know I, I don't know, I can't get it together. It's because you haven't trained your mind. Sure. You haven't taken thoughts captive. It is not easy. I'm telling you, it's not easy. This is spiritual warfare right here. Right here, this mind. When you war like this and you get victory over it, there's not a whole lot more the enemy could do. Yeah. I mean, really, it's like, what are you going to do? <laughs> Kill me? Right. I, Nathan used to always say this, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> it's like, I'll just, I'll go to heaven. You can kill me and I'll just go to heaven. But until that day, we're going to war like it's my last day on earth. Uh, Herb and I have this, this thing that we, long time ago, when we used to fight every single day of our life before... <laughs> Before the Lord got a hold of us, we don't leave the house. We don't, we don't leave ourselves without making sure that we're okay with each other. We have never, we've never gone to bed angry, never, go, never leave the house without saying I love you or I apologize. Because I don't know if all, I, I'm not promised that. I know we have a lot of people saying, well, you know, God promised, no, he doesn't. He didn't promise you, you're going to see your husband when he walks out the door. You know, well, heaven forbid you don't want that to happen. But we're not promised anything, so we have to always, always keep life right. It's so important. It gives us the ability to discern rightly. And that's important when you're ministering to somebody. You have to be able to look the demonic in the eyes and let them know what they can and what they can't do and mean it. You have to know that it's like you can't you can't blow smoke up their skirt because it's not going to happen. So keeping your mind free from guile, keeping your mind pure. We're back to that mind thing again. <coughs> Gives you the ability to discern rightly. And then God operates through joyfully serving the Lord. Psalms 102. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. How, how does Satan's kingdom operate? Through promises of power. He promises you power. It costs you everything, your life. Through the lust of your flesh. He uses our flesh. Remember, the flesh is associated with the heart and the mind. Of course he's going to use the flesh. I'm almost done here. Ephesians 2.3 among them, we too, all formerly, it says all because all of us have done it, lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging in the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. There's that mind again with the flesh. Here we go with the mind. And um, he operates through pride. The, the very first thing that Satan did was to be prideful. He was prideful. And I'm not going to read the scripture. We'll just kind of go over it. But what he did is he, he said, you know what? I'm going to be the big guy. I'm going to um, I'm going to be above Jesus or above God. And God was not going to have it. He was not going to have it. So he said, I will ascend. I will raise my throne above God. And I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. 
I will make myself like the Most High. I even hate saying that because it just sounds so pompous and arrogant. Nevertheless, he's being brought to hell. To the recesses of the pit, those who see you will stare at you. They will closely examine you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble? At what point did the kingdom of darkness come in and influence the way we do, the way we teach warfare? It has. I mean, I don't know when it happened, but it has. It's been gradual. It's had the influence of the occult. Yeah. There's a draw to the mist to the to the realm of the mystic. I mean, it's just very, very drawing. It's very, um, it's very seductive. It's like, oh, you might want to know a little more about that, just for you know informational purposes. No. <laughs> So when I have to do research, especially when somebody is, you know, and I don't quite understand the background their, of their heritage, um, a, lot of, a lot of times like with the Hispanic background, I know some of it because that's what I am, but I don't know all of that. When they say, well, my mother was or my dad was into this and this, and then you have the Asians with the ancestral worship and the different gods, and they'll name some of them. I, I have to just briefly, briefly look up what those things are I never go deep at all. I just need to find the, the re, what they did and the demons behind it, and then I'm out of there. I, I make sure that I guard, whoop, guard my heart. I always, Lord, put, a, put armor over my heart because for some reason they just love to come and mess with it. And I delete all the cookies off of my computer. I pray over myself, and if, and if I'm still having a hard time, I will ask her to pray over me. But I only research to the degree that I need understanding because of the seduction of the occult realm. That's how they bring people into that realm. It is very, very subtle. So you want to be careful when you are doing research. You want to be careful because a lot of times, this is what this is how I was going to do part of the teaching was you know on the realm of the occult and, and that's why it's God like why are you doing that? We all know it's there. What what are you doing? Because that's how we learned how to do. But if we give you God, and if we give you His kingdom, and yeah. His power and His authority and the way He thinks. Well then, yeah. guess what? We've already won. That's right. Amen. We don't need to know all of that. That's right. We need right. to know Him. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So when we're warring in the Spirit, you want to make sure that you keep a watch over your mind. When we take people through ministry and we walk out of the ministry room, Herb and I right over ourselves. We call it dusting. We're like, anything here? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, all over the, oh, you found something back there, okay. We, I mean, we do that. We will pray over our mind, over our hearts. We pray over our home. We pray over, I, I like to say this, everything I love, own, and possess, I pray over it. Because the enemy is conniving. He is conniving, and we don't give him a place. You have to be wise as a serpent. Wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. We need to know that there's a real enemy out there, and just because I've had a really awesome ministry time with somebody, and they got so free, I'm like blown away myself, that he's not going to come back and go, oh, really, you think you're all that? And then he does this thing on us. No, no, I'm going to get you at the pass before you try to come back at me. So we make sure that we're, that we're at least 100 steps in front of him Amen. so he doesn't get to come in, okay? Um, when you're warring in the spirit, make sure that you are being and staying in relationship with God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Always, always, always. You walk with him so close that you don't know where he starts and you end. And then, when you're warring in the Spirit, make sure that you're walking in the authority given you. 
And it comes by building your spiritual muscle. It's by reason of use. 25 years ago when I started this, I had like a little muscle. It's like, okay, Jesus. And, and, and that's where I was doing the screaming because I thought in the screaming came the authority. Right. And now I just do this. Yeah. Okay, you need to stop right to now. And you need to come out of them or her. And, and that's all I'm going to say to you. And nope, you're not going to argue. You're just going to do what I said to do. That's it. No more, no less. Um, so you're, you're an authority. And when we're an authority, we're in charge. You know, when you're screaming and, and, and your whole flesh is getting all crazy, you're not an authority. You're in the flesh. I mean, your authority is in there, but you're like mostly flesh. It's like, like, yeah. okay, just times that we've been, you know, come out of there right now in Jesus' name. I sound like the one demon possessed, you know? It's like, okay, Cindy, slow your roll. Like, calm down, girl, because, you know. So, when we're warring in the spirit, make sure that you are being willing to release anything that can trip you up. Lord, is there something in me that I need to release to you that I haven't? Mm -hmm. Up until recent, there's stuff that I've had to release to the Lord because I was hanging on to it. Was it bad? No. Was it obedience? No. Did he ask me to do it? Yes. Did I do it? No. Was it a sin to probably you guys? No. And it wasn't a sin to him, it was just an act of obedience that he just said, I just need for you to do this. And in doing that, I can take you deeper. I was so excited, it's like, give it up, give it up, Cindy, because I want to go as deep as, as I can in you, Father. I don't want to stay where I'm at. Today, I don't want to stay here. I mean, because this is, this is, I want to go deeper. By next week, I want to be deeper than I, where I was Amen. today. And when you're warring in the spirit, make sure, you, make sure you know your limitations. You have to know your limitations. If you're, in, I see this all the time. We see people doing ministry. It's like, I'm doing ministry on somebody who, um, you know, whose family has been in the occult. It's like, you've never dealt with that. What are you doing? You have to know what you're doing. There's, there's really, there's steps that you have to take. They're going to lie to you. They're demons. They're going to lie to you. Are you gone? Yes. I've had people, I've had somebody say that. I said, so are you gone? They said, yes. I said, really? <laughs> You're not gone. Yeah. <laughs> and so know your limitations. Being willing to receive correction and ministry. We all need ministry. Yeah. When my friend Sue comes out, I'm sure that I'm going to try to find, is there something in there, Lord, that I need for her to, to you know, to work on? Sure. And then stay, the biggest thing, stay in the attitude of repentance. Okay? And this, this, uh, this next scripture is really probably, to me, one of the most important scriptures. John 10, 17. Now the 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, and it almost sounds like so, like, you know, Jesus wouldn't say, I saw Satan falling from the sky. He's like, I saw Satan falling from heaven like lightning. You know, I, no big deal, you know, I saw him falling. So behold, I've given you authority to walk on snakes and scorpions and the authority over all the power of the enemy, all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your name is recorded in heaven. Amen. You know, when the supernatural happens, there's an excitement so we have to be careful that that doesn't pull on us. And so in verse 20, that warning, that's a warning. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. This is something that God had to deal with me a long time ago because I... I knew I had strong giftings, but when I started to operate 
and the gift of discernment and then you know doing some deliverance i'm like yeah look at me i'm like no don't look at you because you didn't do anything in your name and he said you know cindy you need to be rejoicing that your name is in my book and that's that sealed the deal for me from them then then on out the cockiness began to decline and I really realized that Cindy you can't do anything without God Amen. you cannot you cannot heal you cannot deliver without God and the power of God it's just his power so remember that today is my current limited understanding about my revelation it may change a year from now it may change six months from now but it's always going to grow with him so we are in a season that we've never been in before and we need to prepare the body for what's going to happen and that's going to be the key for our success in going forward living a holy life and just talking to sue she goes you know cindy we need to be so close to living a holy life. I was trying to write down everything she was saying. I'm like, I can't even do it. All I got was living a holy life. <laughs> and I said, Sue, you want to come down and do it? She says, oh, you got it, girl. So, okay. It's all right. Thank you. <laughs> and living a holy life looks so much different than it did at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. We're in another plate. We're in another phase of, of repentance. I just heard... Dutch Sheets, Brother Tim Sheets. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. He was talking, I'm like, I was going to say that, Tim. Talking about repentance. We're in, a, we're in another phase of repentance. 